How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the show. It is a very special edition of Vintage Update. We are live right now on the Spreaker Web Radio Network and on our website at WrestlingAudioRevolution.com. Now, tonight is Night of Champions, and we would like to welcome, again, the co-host of Vintage Update, the Mick Foley. Yes, the Mick Foley of the Wrestling Audio Revolution crew, not just because of his death-defying reckless acts that he commits here on the air every time that Vintage Update is on the air, but because of his second career, or is this his first career? And this is what we need to find out right now, but we have the man on the line, and I'm going to get the answers. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Shotgun Shan, welcome back to the airwaves. Vintage Update, we are live, and the people want to know, and I want to know, were you a podcaster first, or were you a children's author first? In my heart, man, I was a podcaster first, but I do have to say that being a children's author kind of came quicker than than my success in the podcast world. But I'm dedicated to both, baby. I'm here. Well, you know how wrestling fans are, Shan. We get very jealous. We're easily slighted. Just look at the treatment that The Rock got there at the end of his WWE tenure. Uh, <laughs> the people turned on him because he was making movies, and I just worry that that may happen to you, even though it is children's you know, you're a children's author, you're doing good things for children, you're uh, stimulating their imaginations, but still, you never know, like, wrestling fans can be pretty petty. Well, man, I hope they understand, and I'm going to be here every, well, I guess every other week, because we alternate, but I'm going to be here every other week, regardless, man. I will not push this aside, because this is where my heart lies. You're not going to let the booze get to you, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I was a little concerned when you did your lead-in comparing me to Mick Foley that you're going to make some comment about my teeth. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the people, uh, everyone that's gotten to me, Shan, I say this all in jest. Uh, everyone's been very excited about it, and they want to know more. And for the people listening now that want to know more, how can they hear more, see more Shotgun Shan, the children's author? Baby, just go to shanmcfadden.com, or you can find me on YouTube or SoundCloud. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, we've got about 20 tracks up there right now that are playing through and getting a lot of attention, especially down in California. So keep up the good work, spread the word, make me a million dollars, baby. Wrestling Audio Revolution, we are for the children, <laughs> right? You know it, man. So uh, what's been going on, man? This has been such a crazy flipping weekend of wrestling already. I mean, you had the CMLL show um, headlined by Atlantis versus La Sombra. That was the big anniversary show at Arena Mexico. Um, you had the Ring of Honor pay-per-view on Friday night um, with a very similar theme to what we're going to see tonight. And I'm sure that will be a theme as this show continues to unfold here. Um, and then, of course, you've got Night of Champions tonight. We're going to talk about that card. I would say I'm somewhat intrigued by this show, not because of anything they've done on television. I can't say that they've really done a great job building the show, but just when you look at it on paper and some of the matches and you hear about some of the things that have been happening on the house shows and who's been working well together, there's a bit of intrigue tonight. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to get some predictions. Um, the people listening right now, if you want to send your predictions, uh, post them on this feed anywhere you see it. We will be very interactive with you um, throughout the show. But I guess we start, you know, talking about the fact that WWE has a show coming up tonight where one man will defend his U.S. title, I would assume early in the show, maybe even the opener, uh, and then will be in the main event defending his WWE Heavyweight Championship. I don't know, man. I would say, you know, you got two shows with the exact same theme. You got Jay Lethal defended his uh, um, TV championship and his world championship on Friday, and then you're going to have this tonight. Somebody must have copied somebody, Shan. <laughs> I would think so. And if we go in chronological order, I would have to say that WWE has copied Ring of Honor. Um, Shan, you're just saying that because it came after. I'm just saying that because that's the order it happened in, uh, yeah, in actual time. Um, and Lethal's been holding two titles now for, what, a couple months, I think? Yeah, I mean, um, we were at the show in May, and that was leading into, you know, when he won the title. So That's true, that's true. And been very active, unlike Seth, who's done, you know, sort of sporadic little... Uh, uh, defenses, but um, you know, Jay Lethal is the man these days. I have to say it. As much as I love uh, WWE product, and as much as I love New Japan, and as much as I love Ring of Honor, when I'm watching Ring of Honor, I'm watching for Jay Lethal. Um, strong, strong talent on that uh, on that roster there. But Jay Lethal is just one of those guys that stands sort of head and shoulders above the rest. 
Now, what do you think of the idea that they went with for this um, Ring of Honor pay-per-view, the All-Star Extravaganza? Um, having Red Dragon split up facing Jay Lethal, I guess Bobby Fish faced him for the TV title, which Lethal was uh, successful and did retain the belt in what was supposedly a very good match. I have not seen that match yet, but I'm getting through the show as I can. Again, it's been a pretty stacked weekend. Um, and then you had the main event um, with him against Kyle O'Reilly, where, I mean, Kyle O'Reilly's a guy that's really been coming into his own as an in-ring talent anyway. I mean, he's since the Super Juniors, he's been on fire. Um, but what do you think of that sort of concept of splitting up a tag team and having them both face for separate belts with the same guy on the show? It works for everybody, doesn't it? Because for starters, I mean, just on paper, either of those two guys um, from a dragon, uh, you know they're going to put on a great match with Jay Lethal. They're both extremely capable, extremely exciting, and and uh, fun to watch um, competitors. So just on that level, splitting those two guys and putting them each against Lethal is fun. From a storyline level, taking one of the best tag teams they've got and throwing them both at Jay Lethal on the same night, it's just it's really compelling to watch. And it's a great victory for Jay Lethal, regardless of how he got through it, which wasn't necessarily all by, uh, you know, by clean wrestling. But the fact that he got through against uh, two members of, of such a, a, a big team, um, yeah, that's pretty impressive. It's a good it's a real laurel for uh, for, for Jay Lethal. So, um, you know, you have to see that it worked well for everybody there. It's a cool out of the box thing. That's what I thought. You know, it's a you got to try something different. Um, you know, I mean, certainly the things that have been set up with Fish and uh, and Lethal building towards that TV title match, and with um, and with O'Reilly out, uh, you know, there's always been these interactions between, uh, well, certainly with O'Reilly and Adam Cole, um, in against the rest of the House of, House of Truth as well. So right, and that was the big payoff that. here, uh, an All Star All Star Extravaganza too. Was um, it looked like the Future Shock tag team was going to be back together. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole reuniting, and uh, of course Adam Cole coming down in the main event, giving the super kick to Kyle O'Reilly, turning on his old buddy, and uh, having Jay Lethal retain the title before we move along here. Um, AJ Styles winning the number one contenders match. He will be going on to face Jay Lethal. Now, I'm trying to remember back when we were watching TNA religiously, when it was a you know a hot product in terms of that X division. Um, we must have seen this match. I just can't off the top of my head remember ever seeing these two guys in the ring together having a singles match. Do you? Well, they were certainly around at the same time, and I yeah. can't imagine that they didn't. Um, you're right. I don't remember it either. My my TNA memories are a bit blurry. I, I don't try. think they ever had any big like pay per view match though. I don't think I remember they... them doing a big a big angle together. No, but gosh, I mean, you have to be drooling a little bit thinking about the possibilities of AJ and uh, and Lethal. Mm-hmm. Now, would you, what would you do regarding this? We can sort of talk about the two contrasting companies and how they should go about this. Um, with Lethal, is it time for him to lose that belt? And, and is the two championship thing, the double title, is it played out or does it have more legs on it? Um, what I would think, you do going into this match with AJ? I think I think you need to keep it on Lethal. I think that this is a great opportunity. AJ doesn't need this. No. AJ is pretty busy these days. But it's a, certainly an amazing way to build uh, Lethal even further. Uh, you know, AJ Styles is the top guy in the world. I mean, there's a, a guy, a bunch of guys floating around that place. But if you call AJ Styles the best wrestler in the world today, no one's going to laugh at you. He, he's he's one of those guys that's at the top. So having just doing a program with Lethal is going to be fantastic for Lethal either way. Mm-hmm. And of course, that match is going to be fire. There's no question about that. Exactly. You know, and I'm and I'm looking at you know their roster, and I'm looking at the guys like the AJs, like the Daniels, um, and all these other guys who can be in there to really contribute to the younger talent. And then you start looking at the younger talent that's coming up, and that's just sort of coming into their own and really kind of being realized. And you have to wonder, you know, with WWE, we've heard the rumors that they're sniffing around at Jay Lethal. Mm-hmm. Um, we've heard rumors about other people too. If you're WWE and you're looking at the Ring of Honor roster right now, realistically, keep in mind that they've recently, you know, signed um, Samoa Joe, um, you know, to a really interesting contract. So the gloves are off now. I mean, you don't there's no longer any predictable um, guidelines that they're going by as far as who they hire. If you're WWE and you're looking at Ring of Honor these days, who are the guys you're going to be most interested in? And who are the guys that you see as being, you know, um, a long-term benefit to your company? Okay. Um, again, because it's WWE, there's two things that they're looking for. Size and obviously athleticism. You know, you've got to be a good athlete. You've got to have good conditioning. 
um, but also personality. So the guys with size and the guys with personality, I would say, are at the top of my list. Who would that be? As green as he still is, he is getting a lot better, but I mean, he's still quite young in his uh, professional wrestling career, and that's Moose. I think most people feel like he's a guy that WWE would be interested in. Mind you, you have a guy now, he's a bit shorter, but uh, you have a guy now in Apollo Crews who has a very similar look and is 100 times the athlete that Moose is um, in, in, terms of, in terms of what he can do in the ring. Um, so it's like, I don't know, maybe Moose... I still say Moose. I would say Moose. Um, Dalton Castle. Oh, Dalton Castle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just again, personality is something that's going to catch their attention. It's what they're looking for. They're all about the entertainment. At least they think they are. And um, Dalton Castle is is definitely a guy they're interested in. Uh, or, well, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that they're interested in. Let's clarify that. That I would be interested in if I were them. The, thing, the thing about Castle that gets me and the thing about Castle that – always surprises me is that he plays this very flamboyant gimmick, this, um, you know, uh, over the top flamboyant fancy boy, uh, type uh, gimmick, you know, um, and I, they, they never really actually act as though he's gay. I mean, it's always inferred, but it's always more that he's sort of flamboyant and very, you know, he likes the, 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 the nice robes and stuff. Um, but I love the character. And then as much as I'm entertained by how big that character is, when he starts to wrestle, you realize not only is he, is he a fantastic technical wrestler, but he's incredibly strong, too. Have you seen some of the stuff he's pulled off against much bigger guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The deadlift on, on all kinds of guys. Oh, you he's know. just shocking. I'm like, what? This guy's amazing. Yeah, and he's got quite the amateur background, too. Um, Does he? Quite an accomplished amateur wrestler. And also uh, 10 years as a radio broadcaster. What? So, so he's got a kind of an interest. He just finished, I guess, when he was signed to his Ring of Honor contract, which wasn't very long ago. Um, that was when he quit his radio career. Um, so he had actually yeah, been doing radio for a long time and, and has a quite, yeah, quite the amateur background if you look into his, his history. So again, he's a guy that, that seems to me like a, you know, a, a, a sure thing, really, when you, when you think about WWE and what they're doing right now. He could slide right into NXT tomorrow. Exactly. Um, um, War Machine, I would say, are, are definitely something that would fit the WWE mold. Yeah, um, I Two agree. big guys that can go. Um, they've been now over in Japan uh, with uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, getting their first taste of the Japanese uh, exposure. So I think that's been pretty cool. Um, who else? Uh, Jay Lethal. Um, because again, the personality. Look at the spots he does. Like on on. I'm not, I don't mean the wrestling spots. I mean the ad spots on the Ring of Honor television. You could give this guy anything to sell, and he can go out there and he can, off the top of his head, come up with something that's like perfect for for selling whatever it is you want i just feel like a guy like that is so friggin valuable and i would assume that's what's really gotten him noticed recently not just the wrestling because there's a ton of great wrestlers in ring of honor but the personality the promos and i think this run with him as the world champion has been sort of the the the, the lightning rod for everybody realizing okay this guy's a top star what are we waiting on here like, there's no question in my mind that Jay Lethal is a top star and could be one anywhere in the world. He's that good as a promo, as a personality, um, and in the ring. So I just feel like Lethal, of course, it, you on the surface, it seems like something that WWE would drop the ball on, and maybe they would. But then you sort of have to realize that, you know, everybody has come in now. I mean, there's <laughs> Daniel Bryan, who would have ever thought he would have come in and and become what he had become you know he was the most over wrestler there for at least a year in the entire company and yes WWE didn't want to push him the way they should as the top guy but he still was at the very tippy top and who would have thought so I just feel like a um, lethal in WWE yeah I can see that man and I can see why they're starting to sniff around him and I think he's handled it well in the press of just saying you know that's what how I got into wrestling you know was, was watching WWF and um it's definitely not off the table, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. That's the best answer right now for Jay Lethal. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And good for him. I mean, he is, you're right, he is handling it well. I mean, there's a part of me that would love to see this happen, but there's the other part of me that's um, so prote so protective oh, yeah. of the Ring of Honor guys because I've seen so many guys just get fleeced sure. when they head into WWE. Um, so there's always that sense that, you know, maybe you're better off where you are. But, yeah, you know what? The guy's certainly lethal and certainly Castle. I think have talent that can't be denied. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's a certain level where 
yeah, there's a certain level of talent that just can't be denied. And I think those two at least, and not that I don't think Moose or War Machine or any of the other guys um, fall into that category. Uh, it's just that those two stand out as as sort of, char- first of all, characters. Second of all, just polished to hell. I yeah. mean, these guys are just, we saw Castle live. And just every gesture, every facial, everything was so mm-hmm. spot on. And and then, of course, the ability to please the crowd. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I go along 100% with what you said. And, you know, too, it's you think of a guy like Lethal and AJ, um, Joe, all these guys. I wish Daniels, too, but I feel like he's just too old now. All yeah. these guys have given so much, and they've given us so many great matches, and they've been so loyal to whatever company they were with, they've been with. I feel like they all deserve to at least make a few years of WWE money at the end of their career. Well, I think Daniels, when I think of Daniels, I think of him as being like a head NXT coach Trench. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Coming in, use his, use what he's got and, and make him a high profile one too, like a high profile coach. But that's where I see you're right. I don't, I think he's far enough into his career now that other than just as an, as a special attraction for one match here or there, I think he'd be best suited as an NXT coach, but yeah. Love, and I mean, love. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, and you can't rule anything out because Sarah Del Rey, for God's sakes, uh, is the head trainer of the girls. Look what she's done with this new crop of female talent. It's incredible. Um, exactly. her, tra- her training is really being credited as, as sort of the, the number one thing that has really turned this division around. Yes, you've had some really great girls, and the hiring practice has changed. Um, you know, again, when we get into the WWE stuff in the second half, we can talk a little bit about this past week's Divas stuff because I thought it was sort of the closest thing to something that felt like um, an advance in the, in the main roster women's division. It actually felt more important than it had so far um, with their Divas revolution. But, you know, I mean, if you put Daniels in there or anybody um, that may be a little bit later in their career as the head trainer, I think that would work. So I just want to see all these guys in a perfect world finish their career making some of that WWE money. Everybody deserves it, especially these guys that have really not just given us great matches, but they've been so influential. Like an AJ Styles, he's been so influential um, to this entire new generation of wrestling that, I mean, he deserves his money. Not that he's not getting it right now, but, you know. But I understand how you feel, though. I mean, I'm, I'm protective about all those guys. Um, so, yeah, um, moving along from the WWE and Ring of Honor thing into the New Japan thing, which is a very easy bridge to make right now. Um, no word right now I'm, I'm, uh, regarding the New Japan WWE relationship, what that actually is. But it's clearly been existing in some way. There's a lot of talk that it could be simply a developmental type of uh, relationship where they will send some of their young guys that they don't have any plans for right now down to Japan and uh, let them be down there as young boys for a while and get some of that experience and get some of that um, experience in front of big crowds as well. Um, who, who would you put in that category of guys that would be For, for American that? guys? For American yeah. guys? Uh, or WWE guys, I mean? Yeah. Let's see. Um, what do you got for Tyler Breeze? You know, there's potentially somebody. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be anybody. It really could be anybody. I mean, there's just so many guys coming in right now uh, in NXT. Uh, it seems like every week there's a new, you know, tag team or, or a new guy that's sort of arriving on the scene that you really haven't heard of before. Um, right now, I mean, even if with NXT you've got uh, Johnny Gargano and what's the guy's name? Oh, for God's sake. Tommaso, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember his name there for a minute. You know, they've been showing up. Uh, it could be anybody that you send down there. Regarding the Japanese guys, I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me that it would be like Shotanaka and Komatsu. Send them to NXT for a while as a tag team. That would be awesome, by the way. Oh, yeah. And uh, and they could be there getting sort of their experience in a different style. A lot of talk is that that's more what the relationship is going to be. And then possibly for big shows, you bring in a Liger, or, you know, you bring an NXT show, you bring in, I don't know who else, you could maybe a Kushida, somebody like that. Um, but uh, regarding their whole situation, we've got two big shows coming up this week with uh, New Japan. The Destruction in Okayama show and the Destruction in Kobe show. Um, there was a Road to Destruction show this morning on New Japan World. Um, started at 2 a.m. I got up at 5.30, and that was early for me, and I'm like, okay, let's watch our New Japan. Then I look on the schedule, and <laughs> it started at 6, or no, what was it, 4 p.m. in Japan, which was like 2 p.m., I don't know. It was really, really early, and I missed the show, but I got to catch up on it a little bit before we got on here. And it was, again, one of the house shows. It's all the multiple man matches, but really what they're building is is the two big cards, one on Wednesday and one on Sunday. And um, the highlight of 
these builds and these road to uh, destruction shows so far has been, of course, this feud between Shibata and Naito, which has continued to be amazing. And Naito, <laughs> we've gone on and on about this new gimmick and how great it is, but there's nobody like him in wrestling right now because he is just pure evil. And on the show this morning, just such a dick. He comes down to the ring. He makes one of the young. He won't get into the ring. Okay, he's tagging up with of all people, Shan. I don't even. We haven't talked about this on the air. There is a new American talent, a new gaijim in New Japan. Uh, one of the most hottest free agents in the entire business. Yes, I'm talking about the one, the only, C.J. Parker. <laughs> <laughs> C.J. Parker is now in New Japan as uh, Juice Robinson. His name is Juice Robinson. <laughs> oh, no. He still has his barbershop dreads. Um, he treats the audience like they're children. Like, it's honestly, it's like, uh, I, w- I would say it's like watching Mr. Dress Up live, like when he would do those live shows. But I think Mr. Dress Up had a lot more swag than uh, Juice Robinson, even. Um, <laughs> he, he, he treats the whole wrestling experience like it's a children's show on YTV. That's that's Juice Robinson. So he sucks, but uh, he was tagging up with Naito, and they were going up against uh, against Shibata, who again, Naito will be taking on Shibata at the second uh, Destruction show. And, uh, of course, Taguchi, right? Mr. Funky Weapon himself. I'll talk oh. about him again in a second. But uh, they're having their tag match, and Naito comes down to the ring. Juice Robinson's already in the ring. And Naito won't get in the ring. And they're like, come on, get in the ring, get in the ring. He won't even. He's standing on the floor. You know, he won't even get in the ring. And so he he won't get in the ring until one of the young boys holds the rope open for him like Miss Elizabeth. Oh. So eventually, <laughs> after this long, drawn-out thing, one of them just says, fine, okay, I think they sent up Sho Tanaka. Sho Tanaka, go hold the rope open for him so he'll get in the ring. We can get this thing started. He goes and he holds the rope open. Naito eventually walks up the apron, and he puts one leg into the ring. And then just walks away and just, nah, I don't even want to do it. And he starts walking to the back. He, he he wouldn't even do it then. So he wasted everybody's time. And then eventually they have this match. And uh, seeing Juice Robinson get kicked in the face by Shibata was pretty fun. I will say that much. <laughs> um, and uh, the match ended when Shibata actually choked out Juice Robinson. So, of course, Robinson took the fall. But then there's this huge brawl afterwards with Naito and Shibata. And they're just destroying each other just killing each other shibata is just shibata is like a shark you know when it comes to those uh, confrontations when things start to get heated he gets real excited and it's, it's just like a, a feeding frenzy for shibata and uh naito eventually gets away from him and naito's so upset and he's on the outside and he knows that he can't do anything about it because shibata is so damn tough so he's just standing on the outside looking all defeated and you almost start to feel sorry for him like he's like the little brother that just got like me just getting you know getting sunned here he starts walking to the back all sad and then he just starts grabbing young boys throwing them at the railing uh just starts beating up the beating up the little guy basically he's such a bully he he beats up the vulnerable people he's walking to the back and then decides no i'm gonna come back goes and kicks the timekeeper who's like this old man (laughs) kicks him right into the face knocks him off his chair and and then walks to the back eventually and is just like fine but you know it was just so amazing he got served up by shibata and his only way to get his heat back was just to beat up a bunch of young kids so <laughs> he's not... incredible he's incredible you know and i've said it before you know when we first got into new japan and you you introduced me to tonight and some of the other guys you know now i thought ah, he's all right but he's a little flavorless isn't he and now my god man after seeing him when we were at the live show and now the character he's become he is just one of the most wildly entertaining people like there's so much going on in all of his uh, in all of his matches and all of his interactions and the smallest little details are kind of blown up to turned up to 11 through naito so uh, i love him now he's got to be one of my favorite new japan guys at the moment oh most absolutely no question and the people Again, it's one of those things where he's supposed to be hated, but he's so entertaining. It's almost a New Day thing, starting with Naito now, because he kicks the old man timekeeper right off his chair. <laughs> he didn't even look like a guy. I swear to God, there they, they, was no communication about this was going to happen or anything. The timekeeper was just sitting there, just l- zoned out. Like, he was just looking off, waiting for his cue, whatever. And, and he just got clocked by Naito. And the crowd was just laughing. Just, they couldn't stop. How can you not? He's so funny. But anyway, so that, that's that been really the biggest, most compelling angle right now that's been going on since the G1. Another really compelling one 
And this is where, where Gato is a genius with his booking of the G1. There's so many things that can happen in that tournament that will just lead to all these angles afterwards for months. You just set the stage for the future. It's so awesome. And one of the things that they did was having Ibushi defeat Makabe during the tournament with the Phoenix Splash clean. So he defeated the never uh, openweight champion, Makabe. And after the match, you know how they do the press conferences, Shan? Yeah. And, the, you know, after the show, they'll have the, the guys back there in front of the backdrop and all that stuff. And the cameras are going and they're asking questions. So they asked Makabe, since this Ibushi defeated you clean, is he going to be the next challenger for your never openweight championship? Makabe's a baby face, but he's a real gruff. You know, he, he, he's not exactly a sentimental type. Um, unless you're talking about cupcakes or, or any kind of sweet <laughs> uh, pastries, stuff like that, you might be able to, you know, get him to open up a little. But he, he was kind of like the way he reacted to this question about Ibushi was, you know, he got lucky. Uh, the never open weight championship is a title for men. He's a boy. He's a comedy wrestler. He wrestles blow up dolls. He's not in tough like me and Shibata and Ishii and Goto. He's not one of those guys. He's kind of a, a joke. He's a pretty boy and he's a joke, basically. So then they've had these multiple man matches where they've been on multi on separate sides. And Ibushi has taken real exception to uh, what Makabe said about him. So he's just been on a warpath. And you know what Ibushi's like when it's time to start brawling. I mean, he can really... He can go, and he's a kickboxer. So that's been another really cool thing. you got these two baby faces in this feud, and they're going to be facing uh, on the first show on Wednesday, the Destruction Show, in the main event. That is the main event of the Wednesday show, Makabe versus Ibushi, never open weight title. So uh, that's been another really awesome thing, because they've basically, after the, after the bell, whenever they're in a match, they're just brawling and throwing each other around a lot like Naito and Shibata. So cool stuff happening. Now, coming up on Wednesday, the Destruction Show, um, oh, one final thing before I say this. I mentioned uh, Taguchi. This is what they've been doing with Taguchi, and it's hilarious. This is going to crack you up, Shen. For whatever reason, you know where you know where Taguchi is on the card. Yeah. He's had his little times of being the, the, the junior champ and everything, but even then, he's like a, he's a comedy mid-card opening match kind of guy, really, these days in New Japan. But he's super entertaining and super funny. So he's been calling out... Nakamura. <laughs> he, he's decided after the G1 that he wants to fight Nakamura. So he's been doing the Nakamura, uh, you know, the, the, where you cross your arms like, and you have two scissors yeah. and you do the shake. He's been doing the Nakamura, like the Bray Wyatt crab walk, where you go, you basically give yourself a German with a bridge. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing all the Nakamura stuff. He, he now has his own shirt, which is like a play on the, on the Nakamura shirt. And um, he's basically trying to do anything he get, can to get Nakamura's attention so that he'll face him because he thinks that they'll, they'll have a great match. So um, they've had like these multiple man, they had a multiple man match and I know it was Goto on one side and w tag teaming with Taguchi and Nakamura on the other side. So they're doing the stare down as they tend to do between two guys that are feuding. So that was Goto and, and Nakamura. They're doing the big stare down before the match and Nakamura's giving him the stink eye and Goto's giving him the evil eye. And on the side of Goto is Taguchi, who's who's basically doing anything he can, making flapping his arms, doing anything he can to try to get Nakamura's attention. And Nakamura is actually swatting him away like he's a like he's a fly, and not even taking his eyes off Goto, just looking at Goto. And Taguchi's like right in his face with the scissors and everything. And eventually Nakamura just gives him a straight kick right to the gut, and then just like starts fighting Goto. And that's been this ongoing thing of. He's trying to get Nakamura's attention, and Nakamura couldn't give two shits about him. And then I noticed on Twitter today, uh, I don't know what he had said. I don't know what Taguchi had said to Nakamura on Twitter. But Nakamura's response was, in English, in caps, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Nakamura's had just about enough of this uh, funky weapon business. But I oh. could see a situation maybe on one of the uh, smaller shows where they actually do this match, and I think it would be extremely, extremely entertaining. It was straight out of Looney Tunes, like... The two big dogs are there looking at each other about to fight. And then there's the little chihuahua at the side. Hey, 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 look over here. Look at me. They took it right out of that. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, and those two guys can pull it off. Not not just the athleticism, uh, but obviously the entertainment level, I think, is going to be. I'm looking forward to it. That's exciting. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's going to be an entertainment match, but one that you think, you know, I could definitely see them doing that. I think it'd be really fun. Okay, let's get into the cards, and then we'll get into WWE. Wednesday the 23rd. That's this Wednesday. Destruction in Okayama. Tanaka, Kamatsu, Nagata, Shibata versus Jay White, 
David Finley Jr., Nakanishi, and Naito. That is the opening match. Mascara Dorada and Jushin Liger, what a team that is, versus Red Dragon. That should be fun. Steve Anthony for the NWA Cruiserweight or Junior Heavyweight title or whatever they call it. Steve Anthony. No, not that Steve Anthony, Shan. Not not, not that. the old Jeff Jarrett looking guy from no, much CFNY music. back. Then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the NWA Junior Champion, I believe, uh, Steve Anthony taking on Tiger Mask. Matt Seidel and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Kojima and Tenzan. Alex Shelley is back in oh, New Japan goodness. teaming up with who we just spoke of, uh, Funky Weapon Taguchi, Captain New Japan Hanma and Goto taking on Beretta Romero. Um, Yoshihashi, Ishii, and Nakamura. Yano and Okada versus AJ Styles and Cody Hall. This is this shows you how slow they move with their shit. Okada and AJ are still building up their rematch for the title. That match happened at the beginning of the summer when, when AJ lost his title to Okada. They still haven't done the rematch. They're still building towards it. It's just crazy. So Yano, Okada versus AJ and Cody Hall. Um, strange team there. Omega, Kenny Omega, one of Shan's favorite guys just from a... a hairstyle standpoint ah. <laughs> uh shan's favorite hairstyle in the business kenny omega getting his rematch against kushida for the junior title so that'll be a good match as well it was last time i'm sure it will be until the end of time and in the main event like we said uh togi makabe for the never open weight championship will be defending his title against kota abushi look for a title change there that's just my prediction now sunday the 27th destruction in kobe uh, Tanaka and Komatsu, the two young boys, again, starting this off against the Gaijin young boys, Jay White and David Finley. Tiger, Mass, Jushin Liger, Hanma, and Makabe will take on Beretta, Romero, Yoshihashi, and Ishii. Matt Seidel, Kojima, and Tenzon will take on Omega, Gallows, and Anderson. Shibata will get his shot one-on-one -on -one against Naito. Oh. So that's Sunday, this uh, week from today. We will be getting the one-on-one -on -one match that they've been now building since the G1 between Shibata and Naito. Should be extremely heated, to say the least. Sakuraba, Yano, and Okada versus Cody Hall, Tama, Tonga, and AJ Styles. Red Dragon versus Time Splitters. Alex Shelley and Kushida. And uh, Tanahashi versus Bad Luck Fale. That is another thing that they set up there in the G1. Fale actually got a clean win on Tanahashi. So we're going to see this match. Tanahashi is going to have his working shoes on because he's going to have to. So this is one of those cases where Gato maybe isn't a genius um, putting that match together. And then in the main event, you thought it was over. You thought he had moved on. But oh no, he got that clean win against him in the G1. And now, once again... Shinsuke Nakamura will challenge Hiroki Goto for the IC Championship this coming Sunday in the main event of Destruction in Kobe. So they're doing this one yet again. And don't be surprised if Nakamura wins his title back again and goes on to defend it against AJ Styles at Wrestle Kingdom 10. I'm fine with that, too. I'm yeah. fine with that. Because I, mean, I like Goto and everything, but Nakamura as champion, he, he just kind of raises it to a different level. So, And honestly, I can watch another match between those two guys and not uh, not even worry about being bored. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the idea of potentially AJ, we all feel like you know Nakamura needs to move on to the world title now. It, it's played out. But at the same time, if the plan is to get that title on AJ for a while, I think he would make a great IC champion. And the problem with Goto, again, great... Great in the ring. He, he, he puts on awesome matches. He's a good, has a good look and everything, but he just doesn't have the charisma of Nakamura. You don't need to speak Japanese to understand that he's not as over as Nakamura. You just have to listen to the crowd, how they react to him. They treat him like a guy that they respect, but they don't love. It's hard to follow Nakamura, too. Like, it's I mean, hard to follow, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's the whole deal on the New Japan side of things. We will talk about, you know, the results from those two shows. The lot quite a few good matches on both of those so let's move along shan the wwe have you been uh, keeping up with the television i know we all do in our own time in our own way with our pvrs or with our uh whatever else you use to fast forward i do i i have been keeping up with my again with my thumb on the fast forward button at least through the first 20 minutes of the show yep um you know that's my policy if i see triple h and stephanie up there with their mouths moving then i generally don't watch that <laughs> yep that's sorry but you no know, i don't I just be. think 
mad, mad repetition. I mean, how many years straight have this, they opened with the same 20 minutes? You can just kind of cut and paste names uh, from one show to the next. And other, other than that, the sequence is generally the same. So other than that, I've been skipping through, but they're building towards a relatively compelling show uh, for um, Night of Champions. Yeah, so let's just uh, run down the card here, first of all, and then we'll get our predictions uh, in just a few minutes. Neville teaming with the Lucha Dragons to take on the Cosmic Wasteland. What have you thought thus far of the Cosmic Wasteland, Shan? You know that I'm a mad Cody Rhodes fan. You know that I think I have tremendous respect for him for making the best out of whatever they give him. I'm really happy to see Stardust and the Ascension working together because I think it works for everybody. Cody needs his own group. I kind of hope they add somebody else at some point too. But Cody kind of needs, even in a lower level team, to be the leader. And I think it's good for him. I think those three guys fit well together. It finally gives the Ascension something to do. Um, and then on the other side, Lucha Dragons and Neville. You can't get really much more exciting than that. I think I have high hopes for this match. It's uh, kind of unfortunate that it's pre-show. But I guess with so much stuff being shown on the network now anyway, pre-show doesn't really mean anything. It mean a step down necessarily. And as much as the Ascension can drag down a match, I mean, you have three really great wrestlers in that match. Or four, I should say. Four yeah. really great wrestlers in that match. Um, so I think you're right. I think that should be a fun opener, um, if that is indeed the opener. But I could see something else being the opener. I could honestly see uh, Rollins and Cena opening the show. But we'll get to that in just a second. Um, I talked in the open about matches that we've been hearing on the house shows have been really tearing it up and uh, sort of leading to the intrigue of tonight's show. Ziggler versus Rusev, believe it or not, has been the best show um, on most of the house shows lately from everything I've been hearing. So... I know it's ridiculous. I know it's a soap opera, but as far as soap opera angles go, I've found this one pretty entertaining. Am I alone when I say that? No. I'm, once the foolishness is over, when these guys actually get down to the actual match, both guys are capable, and they have a really good chemistry in the ring. So I'm with you on this. I think if we can keep the Lana and Summer stuff to a minimum um, and really just let Ziggler and Rusev go at it, um, you know, with, with some kind of real relevance behind the, 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 the feud, um, I think that you're going to see something good out of the two of them. Believe it or not, I was actually talking about the storyline. Uh, yeah, the match as well. I mean, the match is what's been uh, getting the good reviews, but I have actually enjoyed the storyline, which I feel like I may be in the minority, but uh, <laughs> there's something about it. I don't know. It, it's really been... I Wait think a it's minute. Rusev. I think it's Rusev. I really do. Wait a minute. But you mean you're loving the, the summer I didn't screaming coming it. out of the shower? I didn't say love it. Oh, no. I didn't say big love it, okay? You're going to hear a grown man cry. <laughs> oh, I know what song we're going to have to end with now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been, as far as WWE soap opera things, I've actually found this one somewhat entertaining. Um, and I don't know why. Again, I think it's Rusev. I can't, because I can't say it's Ziggler. I can't say it's Lana. I think that they've completely miscast her i think she's just lost again she's uh hurt right now but even before that i mean the denim and all this stuff i can't help but feeling shan and i don't know if this thought's gone through your mind or maybe it's gone through everyone's mind and i'm just the last one to come to this conclusion i'm feeling more and more like they're going to be back together yeah that's i was just going to say that i'd actually read that there's talk that they're just going to put the two of them back together because they're both kind of floundering on their own um i don't know how you do that and ever have any chance for Lana to do anything else, but maybe maybe they've overestimated what Lana can deliver. Uh, I would certainly like to see the two of them back together, and if you do that, you need to re rehab Russo. I hope she does um, a promo where she's like showing pictures of herself in the denim and just sort of laughing and being like, do yeah. you actually think I would go outside of the house dressed like this unless I yeah, yeah. had a, some kind of ulterior motive? Um, I mean, it's just been atrocious. I mean, the chemistry between them and, and what they've done with Lana, but Rusev has just been such an entertaining character to me. Um, the more he talks, the better he gets. Yeah, and that's it's, the problem. Again, it's one of those things that, that they're giving him crap to work with. But the more he's talking, the better he's getting. And it's one of those things. Like it's definitely not what he should be doing right now. I feel like he should be a lot higher on the card and should have something more serious. But at the same time, it's perfect example of of getting uh, chicken shit and, and making some chicken sh chicken salad out of it. You know. So uh, yeah, so that's what's been going on there. I, I just I don't think that analogy is very hygienic. I, think no. what, I don't no. think you make chicken salad out of that. You need to start with new chicken. But I see what you're saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And, and uh, So anyone that's listening, anyone that's listening, <laughs> heard what Luke just said, do not follow Disclaimer. that recipe. Disclaimer. 
<laughs> um, but anyways, uh, if this was a video cast, we could have a little disclaimer at the bottom of the screen right now. But uh, anyways, hopefully people are smart enough, but you never know. It is Fall Fair weekend in Port Hope, so... <laughs> Nothing against carnies. Nice little I, inside reference there. Yeah, yeah, nothing against any any carnies out there because I know they make up the majority of the audience right now. We love <laughs> you and thanks for the support. Oh, okay, oh. um, the New Day versus the Dudleys. Oh my God. We've got to talk about the New Day a little bit, but first of all, just uh, the trombone. Oh come on! What an addition. The greatest, one of the greatest ringside props now i think in wrestling history i can't think it to, i mean jimmy hart's megaphone maybe but it's up there with it isn't it i mean these guys do this ridiculous soundtrack and as we were discussing on the weekend it's really hard to tell if xavier woods is a really good trombone player pretending to not be a very good trombone player or if he's just not a very good trombone player but it doesn't matter it's equally entertaining either way you slice it yeah i imagine that he's like a guy just in my head this is what brings me the most joy is to imagine him as a guy that like played the trombone for one year in high school in you know in <laughs> music class and learned just enough you know because he, he he'll do the pink panther theme but he'll be like two or three notes off but it's just enough so you know what he's trying to play yeah uh yeah he 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 i would say they too and obviously all three guys have just completely reinvented themselves they've shown how much person that personality they have but he has been the shining star of pretty much every single Raw, you know, recently. Um, and that, good if, for him, too, because, I'm um, honestly, he was the guy that they seemed to have put the least stock in. I can't remember very many Xavier Woods matches that no. were, were, you know, at any point in the card where you'd pay attention to them. And by God, if he hasn't taken this whole angle and injected it. I mean, you got to feel that Kofi and Big E, but probably Kofi the most, were a little bit jaded going into the angle, going, yeah, been here before. Nothing's going to come out of this. But Woods took it and ran with it and added that insane personality, like a yappy dog that, um, you know, that never shuts up and ins- and just kind of made them classic. They became classic over a period of about two weeks. They went from being, huh, what? They're actually kind of cool to, to just being now classic stuff that I look forward to every week. I don't care what they're doing. I'll watch them do it. Yeah, no question about it. You know what's funny is that there's somebody that saw – this in him long before the wwe and you know who that somebody is shotgun shan you're right my friend because long before i took notice of a young consequences creed i know he was a guy that you pretty much since the moment he debuted in tna and we saw him live you always saw a bright future for this guy i did i always thought that if he could make the hurdles and get through all the junk that he was going to be thrown at him if he ever moved up into WWE, that he would be a big deal. He was, and he's the other thing about Xavier Woods that you never see uh, really is that he's an outstanding, outstanding wrestler. His aerial game is out of control um, and he's a great Matt wrestler. He's just a fantastic talent, but he kind of doesn't need it right now, which is cool because at some point he's going to be able to pull that out and really blow people away. I think he's going to be a, a huge deal. There's also the whole fact that the guy has a PhD mm-hmm. or is he, does he have it or is he still working on it? Um, I, I believe I, I, I want to say he's still working on it, but yeah, I, think I think he, I think he may no I yeah, I think he, he's still working on it. I heard him on uh, Jericho's podcast, but, which was extremely entertaining too. He, all three uh, new member guys with Jericho. That was awesome i bet but the the whole thing about that is you immediately have a guy that has everything going on in the ring and mm-hmm. something to fall back on so it kind of doesn't matter you know what i mean so he's doing it because he loves it and and it just kind of opens up it gives a bit of freedom to that guy to kind of do what he wants to do so thank god for new day that's all i can say i'm glad the dudleys are back and we'll talk about them as we you know analyze this but thank god for new day because i look forward to every segment that they do and i seek out xavier wood's uh youtube show as well just because i love seeing those guys together or whoever he happens to be talking to it's always a good interview now they do have a problem with the new day and it's one that i have no problem watching unfold i think it's going to be entertaining to see it happen but from a company standpoint, um, these guys are getting to a point now where they're so entertaining and they're so much fun and they're so like, I mean, as much as they're like, we talked about this when I called into your show that you did with Sean, their Super 4 show, Super 4, Super Show 4, Super 4 show. <laughs> um, but anyway, Super Show 4, I called in and we were talking about this a little bit. But uh, they still do the heel promos and stuff like that, and they try to get heat. But there's just no heat on these guys anymore. They're just entertaining. The people love them. They want to see them. 
and you're reaching a, a point with a lot of other tag teams where they're sort of half over. You know, they're really not hot teams. Even the Dudleys. I mean, the Dudleys are the hottest, but certainly, I mean, the primetime players. Oh, you, put, you put them in there with the primetime players. Who the hell is going to cheer the primetime players over the New Day? You know, and yeah. uh, the Dudleys even tonight, I feel like there's a bit of a risk of the crowd turning on the Dudleys and going with the New Day, uh, giving them sort of the old man treatment. I could really see that happen tonight for some odd reason. But uh, I, I can see it happen, too. And you're right. They're, they're in a bit of a precarious situation because the fans love them because they're heels and they're entertaining. Like, I kind of feel like if they turn them face, unless they turn them face, but don't change them at all. Um, like let them still be exactly the way they are now. My, my worry is that if they turn them face, they're right back where they were six months ago when the fans were supposed to love them and hated them. Cause it's a weird gimmick and it's just kind of ironic enough that it works when they're heels and still talking about positivity and dancing and doing all this crazy stuff. I just wonder what would happen if they actually let them go full face. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, again, you're putting them, there's not a lot of teams that are over baby face teams, you know? Exactly. So you're you're running into a real problem where the crowd is going to back these guys. They're going to back them in a match. I, you know what? With with not that many teams to play with in the tag team division, I'm fine with the fans backing a heel team that stay heel no matter what and that they turn against the faces. I don't mind that because I think it's entertaining and fun and it just kind of it's a good holding pattern until you have somebody that can really in and go come in and go against them. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing as long as you hold the course. And you don't screw up the gimmick. Interesting. Now, um, Nikki versus Charlotte rematch um, from Raw. Again, like I said in the beginning, I felt like there's been a lot of missteps, pretty much every single one, regarding the Divas Revolution on the main roster. Um, Bringing all the girls up at once, putting the attention on all of them at once. The overemphasis of this revolution in sports, what they keep talking about on on the commentary and everything else. And then really, I mean, what it really is, is just kind of slightly better matches uh, with more time, but not a lot of heat. And, and again, it's nothing against the girls they brought up. It's just a matter of how it's been presented. We had the Miz TV segment that got hijacked. I felt this past week was the closest thing to an actual revolution in the Divas division on a main roster. It felt more, it felt bigger than it had for the last few months, should we say. Um, I don't obviously agree with the finish, but they're trying to tell a story. What that story is, I don't know. I'm interested to know what you thought and where you think they're going to go with with this match tonight. Well, I mean, how I felt about it, I didn't believe for a moment that they were going to let AJ AJ Lee keep the um, the record that she held. And I don't think they're necessarily being nasty. I just think they feel like she's gone. They're having problems with her husband. Let's kind of wipe her off the history books as best we can, and let's pass this on to somebody else. So I had this feeling that Nikki Bella was going to get it. Um, on the other hand, I don't know if it's Charlotte's time. It almost seems... I. I just get this feeling that if they give it to her right now, it's not going to mean as much. Like, they really kind of need to build this a little more. It seems a little flat coming off that last match. Um, they've set up the the match tonight is um, DQ, count out, whatever. She still loses the title, right? So it's basically either she wins or she loses. That's the, Those are the stipulations for tonight's show, right? That's right, yeah. So it almost seems a little too obvious that that Charlotte would win. So I think, I think Nikki Bell is still going to take it. I don't know... It's so it's such a difficult situation because I don't like the way it's being executed, but I really love the new talent, and um, so it's kind of a love hate the way that it's playing out. I really think the old guard of WWE needs to be kind of swept aside. The Bellas need to step down and let these girls, uh, the new girls, do what they can do best. But it needs to be done the right way, or I don't know if it has the same value. What, what's your take on what's going to happen tonight? See, I, mean, I would agree. I mean. The thing is, is that with it, for this to really be a revolution and for this to really feel like something different and a change and okay, you got to watch these these women's matches now because it's awesome wrestling and it's not. Again, I, the only thing I listened to your show with Sean, I love the show. You guys have a great chemistry. The only thing I just really disagreed with was um you you saying that um you 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 get I'm uh, not offended, but you you get uh, uncomfortable with people saying it was good for a women's match. And I sort of talked about it on the show with Sean that we did last week, just the fact that it's not 
it's not necessarily a sexist statement. It's more of the fact of what the women's division in WWE has been since 1998. And me and Sean went on our, our two hands, and we couldn't come up with 10 wrestlers, real professional wrestlers that you would look at and say, yes, this is a match. This women's match could hold up on any with any other men's match on the card. And we couldn't get to 10 um, from girls from 1998 um, until now, say before this new crop of girls came in to the main roster. Uh, obviously the Trishes and the Mickeys and all that. But, I mean, when you really think of it, this division has been really terrible for a long time, and that's nothing to do with women. That's to do with WWE and their hiring practice and how they have presented women. I so, agree with you, yeah. So, so in a sense, you're not wrong because I think a lot of people do sort of turn on wrestling when it's two girls in the ring. They don't want to see two girls wrestling. But then again, there's that other part of what I said, the history of what this division has been for so long has been really bad. It's been bad except for, I think we got to about seven girls that you could really say could hold their own against any other match on the card. Um, so, so that's been the real problem. For this thing to work, it has to just happen. It can't be a gradual thing. We can't do six, seven, eight months of getting the old guard out and, and building towards Nikki being overthrown. It needs to just happen overnight, and it needs to be like, okay, this is what women's wrestling is now. Because when you go too slow with this thing, the fans, first of all, I don't think are going to have the patience for it. Um, and you need to make a statement. It needs to happen. Um, Charlotte, as the champion, I think it's – I can understand when, why we would say it may not be the right time for her. But at the same time, I feel like for this thing to work, we need to make a statement, and it needs to happen now. And women's wrestling needs to get better on the main roster Monday. You know, it needs to start now. Um, so for that to happen, like you say, the, the old guard has got to sort of be swept aside, and that's going to be really hard when you consider their political allies. That's true. That's true. You got, um, yeah, you got uh, Nikki with John Cena there, and I don't think Daniel Bryan's as protective as no. Bree's just, you know, undercard. But yeah, it could be difficult. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that if you're going to do it, you need to do it, and then you need to work through. Charlotte just defeating everybody that you're going to push down, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Perfect. Bellas and Roxy and whatever, Foxy and, and, um, and, and you know, some, uh, even Naomi, I mean, much like yep. Naomi, I think it's time for her to move down too yep. and work her way back up again. You need to go through all those ones and say, look, at, we've beaten everybody from that from that sort of era and now we're bringing in the new girls and i'm on i'm 100 behind you on that idea mm -hmm. um i just feel like after that that finish on monday if they do it right and they can make it a real honest to god strong celebration tonight then i'm i'm fine with it right and then on monday she walks out with the divas championship throws it in the garbage and you know debuts the new women's championship Hey, I've, that's, hey, that's then, what I want to see. Then we're done with the butterfly belt, thank God. We're done with the butterfly belt, and we're done with referring to female wrestlers as divas. Yeah, I agree. Right? Um, NXT doesn't do that. It's the women's, whatever they call it, women's uh, heavyweight championship. Yeah. It's what it should be, and that belt too. I mean, that looks like a credible belt. You could you could even say that looks more credible than the NXT World Championship. Yeah, I agree. It looks like a belt you'd want to hold. Um, whereas the butterfly belt, and again, a butterfly, like the sexual innuendos there, like, come on. Uh, so I just want to see a whole new presentation. I want to see it presented as women's wrestling, and then we can move on. Once we presented it as just real wrestling, then we won't even have to say women's wrestling anymore. It can just be wrestling, and you can say, what a great match. Not what a great women's match, just what a great match. That's what I want to see. I, I agree with you. That would be that would be that would open the doors to an awful lot of interesting things happening over the next few years. Mm -hmm. And it's it's real simple. They just have to really do a shift because they haven't done it yet. And uh, Charlotte Wing and, and like you say, sort of taking out the all the girls that need to move down. I like that. And then moving on to just the girls that can go going in there and going because they're wrestlers. So anyways, uh, other matches on the show. This one intrigues me. Kevin Owens versus Ryback. What do you think? I know you're a fan of both guys. Um, I think Ryback's established himself. I mean, I always thought Ryback had a certain amount of charisma and a certain amount of um, – that there was a possibility – at least for him to be one of those big guys that really stood out. Um, you know, he certainly mixed up his style with a lot of the splashes and the over-the-top stuff. Didn't necessarily pay off. I'm not entirely sure that that didn't contribute some of his injuries. Um, at the same time, he started singing the other day, and I immediately bumped him down a couple of notches on my <laughs> opinion meter. It wasn't his fault, I'm sure. 
Terry thought it would be funny, but even the crowd just stood there with their mouths open going, what? So um, at the same time, I think Ryback's shown that he has something. I'm not entirely sure he needs to hold the title that much longer. Um, and I think Owens, I think a good little feud between these two guys over a series of a couple months, whether Owens wins it this show or, or next show, I do think it's time to put it on Owens. Um, he, you know, he came out of that scene of feud still looking pretty hot he's kind of mucked around a bit with Cesaro I wouldn't say it's been a full-blown program but they've had some really good matches and maybe they can revisit that down the road I would certainly put it on Owens either either tonight or at the next show yeah much like the women's uh, title you know they need to make a statement with that intercontinental title nothing against Ryback but it's just it's just not as hot as it could be, you know, let's put it that I'm being kind. There are, uh, lot, there are a lot more possibilities with Owens. A lot more with possibilities with yeah. Owens. And that guy's just such a great promo. That guy's got such a presence, even though his look is obviously not the traditional look. Um, I think he's sort of overcome that. And if he's not going to be in that top mix of John Cena and all that stuff, if that, if that time has passed for now, I think him as the IC champion. And, and like I said, with him and Cesaro, I mean, they are really freshening up that upper mid mix, you know, as much as I feel they should be higher, they're really giving you some hot stuff for that middle of the card stuff. And I think that the Ryback IC title reign is just not able to you. I mean, you're a fan of Ryback, but you must admit this. Like, I mean, he's just not able to deliver those matches. No, he's on not. a consistent he's, basis anyway. No, yeah, you're Ryback's got a very specific role that he can play going forward, and if they, you know, if they handle this well and keep him moving, I think he can continue to to fit into that slot. But it's not the slot that a Kevin Owens is going to hold. The Kevin Owens is this guy who I think can bring bring more prestige to the belt, and you can kind of sit down. If Owens becomes champion tonight, you can sit down on paper and come up with a list of about six guys you really want to see him fight over the next year. You can't do the same thing with Ryback. you got to kind of pick and choose. So, as I said, I think putting it on Owens opens up, gives you a field of possibilities that aren't there otherwise. The other problem with Ryback is that he can't have long matches. Yeah. You know, he's never been able to have long matches. So, a guy like Owens can go in there, even with his size, he's got the conditioning, he can go in there and have a 20-minute match, a 25-minute match. Ryback is like, you're pushing it if you go to 10 minutes. And I think with this match tonight, you're pushing it if you go to 10 minutes tonight. I think you are too. So yeah. there, there's the other problem with Ryback. I mean, like you say, he's got a spot. And he's got a, a very interesting, very unique charisma. With that said, they write him probably the worst stuff on the roster. <laughs> and he's one of those guys, when you give him bad stuff, he is not able to uh, make chicken salad out of that chicken shit. That's uh, right. For the and, most part. Uh, Ryback, he's not the best at uh, delivering the bad material. Let's put it that way. That's Dean right. Ambr and as we said before, keep up keep up with that disclaimer, man. Don't try actually fabricating that in the <laughs> yeah. chicken salad. Yeah, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. Well, you, no, that's true. Dean Ambrose. And does that lead us into the, the Ambrose Reigns Wyatt's match? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, and, this, is, which is, this is intriguing, too. It really is, isn't it? Because, um, you know, it seems so many times that this feud was over it kind of evolved from, from the Wyatt uh the Bray Wyatt Roman Reigns feud and then became you know involving the other guys and it kept seeming like it was over but they brought in Braun Strowman who again super green but mm -hmm. has a presence man you cannot deny that uh and now they've got a mystery partner coming in and there's an awful lot of ways that this could go it could be an underwhelming partner choice it could be an overwhelming partner choice we could have a great surprise ahead for us so what do you think about uh, this mystery opponent match See, I could see it being someone pretty high profile, a Daniel Bryan, even. Um, I could. Yeah, see... you know what? Daniel Bryan is technically cleared by certain doctors. I had not even mm -hmm. thought of that. Jesus, man, you just gave me a tingle. That's awesome. And again, I think a lot of people feel, and I would agree with this, that Daniel Bryan, he's been cleared, right? He just hasn't been cleared by the WWE doctors. Yeah. Um, and I feel that the reason they're not going through with bringing him back right now is because of the whole concussion lawsuit that's going on yeah. and the fact that Brian was out with that concussion, that really bad concussion, and has had a history of concussions. And I think they're going to keep him off until this lawsuit is in the rearview mirror. I don't know how much longer he has on his contract. I don't want to get any speculation out there. I don't want anyone saying Luke Force said anything. Just I don't know how much time Daniel Bryan has on his contract. Um, I'll have to check into that. 
But with that said, I feel like they're going to hold him off until this concussion thing has blown over just because they don't want to risk it. With that said, anything can happen right now. Um, And Brian being back, they need something, man. These ratings, we haven't mentioned the ratings, but this past Monday was the lowest rated Raw in 18 years. Wow. 18 years. And, And it just continues to go down. And we can talk about the two, you know, main events with Rollins and whether the idea of Rollins in, in this role as the world champion has been and having so much TV time, is that something that's turning people off or what is it? But uh, yeah, in terms of this mystery partner, could be anyone from Brian. I don't, I don't rule out the idea of it even being the rock with that said, it could be someone much lower profile. And if it's someone much lower profile, who would you give this uh, rub to Cesaro? Okay. Absolutely he's not booked. Cesaro. He's not booked. Is he? Absolutely. Cesaro. And I'll tell you why for starters, Cesaro is over with the crowd, despite, you know, no matter oh, time, yeah. how many times the guy gets fumbled, he's over with the crowd. Number two, it's a fresh mix. I'd love to see Cesaro and Wyatt go at it, uh, and Cesaro and Harper go at it. Um, it introduces a new face. Um, that that would be my top pick. I mean, there are other guys you could say, Randy Orton or whoever, but um, I would really love to see, even more than a high-profile guy, I'd love to see Cesaro get this because I think he freshens that up and makes it kind of exciting. And if they want to do an ongoing threesome, um, I think Cesaro, Ambrose, and Reigns would make a cool kind yeah. of Shield 2.0. Um, so I, that's what I say. I say Cesaro. I like it. I like that. I hadn't even thought of him at all. Um, but you're right. He's not booked on this show. Now, he has been – he got over too much again and has been on a losing streak ever since. Um, so this is just ridiculous. What a ridiculous world, eh? What a ridiculous what a, what world. What a ridiculous world, yep. The, um, uh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's just I don't even really have much more to say than that other than it's just a bit disgusting that the guy has such a tremendous amount of talent and that he can get to a point where he's getting um, more attention than the than the office is uh, comfortable with. And so they pull him back. It's just seeing it happen again and again. I, the guy must have have the resolve of a of an iron man i don't know how he gets up and puts on these great shows every week because he's been you know fumbled so many times oh absolutely uh another another angle i've heard of and i know this is something that they've been talking about for a while potentially using the uso um bringing in the uso and then having that lead to reigns turning heel by blaming ambrose for bringing his family into this and all this stuff uh so i have heard that the idea of a roman reigns heel turn is something that is like really being talked about right now and it seems to me like something that's way overdue personally oh mind massively you, mind you mind you this past week i thought he did an actually a really good job with his promo and i thought like he finally found his voice uh this past week and they didn't give him this long soliloquy or anything like that they didn't get him to go out there and tell jokes. They didn't get him to go out there and scream and shout. He was very calm, but very like serious, very badass. Uh, so I liked what they did with Reigns, and I thought that he was the closest thing to being like a, a top babyface that he's been ever, really, uh, this past week. So maybe that's not the case, but yeah, like I know that they've been thinking about it. And when you start thinking about the world title right now, and I have a feeling it's going to play hot potato for a while, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, again, possible mystery opponents, anyone out there, who do you think, who do you think, and who are we missing? Who could slide into this role or is it going to be a big letdown? Is it going to be like Savio when he filled in for Shawn Michaels at that one, no way out? Oh no, no. I, it, you never know. You never know. Um, know. is it going to be, is it going to be Gilbert? <laughs> I would hope it's not going to be Gilbert. I would hope, I mean, I think that w- you know, you've you've added Braun Strowman. I think they're going to want to balance it out with someone on the other side that certainly is not as big as him, but somebody that you feel can hold his own. Small Joe. <laughs> I think otherwise. Well, you could be an NXT guy coming up. That's what know. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You think? Well, it could be. I mean, it could be. I mean, there was talk it was going to be Baron Corbin because I guess yeah. somebody had seen a graphic. I think that was fake. I think he's the wrong guy for that. He's not going to join up with the Shield based on his character, but maybe that is the right time to make a debut of an NXT guy. I don't know. It's a it's a nice it's nice because people are really paying attention and wanting to see who it is. So you can either deliver on that opening or you can you know you can let them down. Let's hope that they're going to deliver. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait and see, but that's definitely one of the matches that I am most intrigued about. I want to know who this mystery opponent is. I'm a sucker for a mystery opponent. It's bringing bring out the old school fan in me. 
where you have the one shaded, you know, character in the shadows there. So who's it going to be? I have no idea. I have not heard a thing. Again, I have heard the rumblings of a Russo or a Russo. Vince Russo. I have heard the rumblings, bro, that he may be coming in tonight, bro. But uh, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Somehow I still have that feeling, too, that the Reigns-Ambrose partnership is is not going to be one that lasts much longer. But we'll see. Um, And finally, we're on to the two title matches here. Rollins versus John Cena, which it could go early or the, the, the world title match, because it is Sting, could go in the middle of the card, and this could be the main event. I have no idea what they're thinking uh, regarding this, but what do you think will happen in this match? Another good match, I would predict. I think it's going to be another good match. I don't think these guys can have a bad match. Um, again, Cena's just brought his game up so much higher, and, and my opinion of him has come up accordingly. Um, I, I, I don't think Rollins is the guy to hold two titles for very long. Uh, I think he's got to flop one of these. And I, I think maybe losing the U, the U.S., if he's going to lose just one, losing the U.S. back to Cena makes sense. Um, he had his little moment of uh, of being holding two championships at once, um, and it doesn't need to go any further than that. I really think that Cena holding that title again, he did so much with it during his first reign that I'd like to see more. And I never thought I w- would find myself saying I want to see more of John Cena um, but I do. I want to see more of him with the U.S. title. I want to see what else he has planned. So let's say let's put it on Cena and let's begin the big transition coming for Seth Rollins, where maybe he loses both titles in one night or mm-hmm. one or whatever, takes it out on Triple H. And we have the divide there. Um, and we can talk about that when we talk about the world title. But I'm fine with it going back to Cena. Well, when you look at the Seth Rollins situation, I mean, you can't help but think, OK, ratings have been in the toilet for weeks now. And this guy has been getting, in a three-hour show, really, if you put all the Seth Rollins segments together, you might come up with one full hour. Um, I would think so. Uh, way too much. If you had told me in 2000 and what, in 2009 or 2010 uh, that Tyler Black would be the world champion of WWE and would be getting almost an hour of television time in a three-hour show, a 20-minute promo to start the show i would tell you you are a bold-faced liar because this guy it's not like he came to wwe and they wrote bad shit for him and he wasn't a good promo he was never a good promo he was always a great wrestler he was always a spectacular wrestler but as a personality he had no charisma has he improved a little bit yes but he's still really not very good as a personality as a talker in this role especially as the top heel, uh, you know, it just doesn't, it's not worked for me. And I think that the ratings pattern would tell tell me that it's not worked for a lot of other people too. And Seth Rollins in a 20 minute opening soliloquy sucks and it's boring. And the crowd's chanting it's boring. And again, this is not um, a knock on his in-ring talents, obviously, because I think he's probably the best guy in North America right now. But again, it's just too much Seth talking and he's just not that guy. He Look, is a baby face. He is dude, not charismatic enough to be a top heel world champion, and that's just my final thought on that. Sorry, go ahead. Well, too much of any, too much of anybody talking is sure. a very good idea. I mean, you, there's a very short list. You can probably list them all. One hand, people who can sit down and talk for 20 minutes yep. and keep the audience. That's you know, right. I mean, not even New Day with all of their entertainment value um, is not running 20 minutes especially not when the fans i hate that's the thing i hate about those opening 20 minute segments that are so long and so slow is you're just waiting for something to happen and you got to sit through it so you're really paying even closer attention to how um how tedious it is you're kind of like oh come on let's get on with it what's happening this week do i really have to listen to that same speech again so um you know i mean i think that's i think the positioning and the frequency of him being on tv has really hurt him a lot and i'm all for i'm all for them doing something to shake that up Mm -hmm. And it's just been kind of a disastrous title reign, really, because he's the lackey of Triple H and Stephanie. And and God, man, this is such a mess of a show regarding those two, because they come out in one segment. They're out there talking about Connor's cure. Stephanie's crying. You can't help but but like these people. 
And then in the next segment, they're supposed to be the top baby or the top heels that are screwing everybody over. And then in the next segment, Triple H is out there like Paul Heyman, rallying the people, NXT, the future. Then in the next segment, he's out there and he's screwing over the top baby face. It's just like, what is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on is that they don't want to give up any of their spots. They don't want to give up anything. They, they don't want to give up any. They, they want to be the big heel, but they also want to be the face of the company to generate goodwill. Um, and they also want to have their moment to, to, to hitch their hitch their wagon to whatever the biggest star is right now. So oh, let's get out there and dance with God. New Day. Um, and oh. yeah, yeah, it's the killer. It's the killer. And that's the killer. It's killing it's killing the momentum of the show. It's killing the sensibility of the show. It's killing the, the fans' um, ability to connect and understand what they're supposed to be doing at any given at any given moment. That's right. So yeah, that's the problem. They've got to what they have to do is do something that Vince was never good at either, which is step back, take their hands off some of these pots delegate some of these roles to certain people which means step down first of all step down as the top heels of the company i don't care i know some people think that stephanie's entertaining and triple h is entertaining and the authority's entertaining but they can't be both and they have to either stop mm -hmm. being the public face of the company that gets to go out there and tell people to support you know uh, breast, breast cancer, cancer research. awareness yeah. yeah and connor's cure they need to either step down from that or they need to step down from being the top heels and um, and or even just stop down from being, you know, major on screen presences in general. I don't think that them stepping down would hurt anything. I think something will move into that position. Um, if his name was Paul Heyman, I'd be very happy. But, you know, I really think that that it really is a matter of letting go. And until they do that, the show's going to the show's going to flounder and the, the blame is going to fall on guys like Seth Rollins when it's really not their fault. Yeah, exactly. And I mean. You can do all kinds of that out of character stuff, showing the charity stuff, um, outside of your television show. I, I've always felt that way, that that stuff really shouldn't be on there. And that's just WWE hammering it down people's throats. Look how much we do. Look at how good we are. Like, why is that stuff on your wrestling show? That's well, part, what I want to know. The wrestling show of... should be the wrestling show, television yeah. show. And everything else can be everything else. You want to put it on your website. You want to put it on your network. I think the people that order the network, they understand, you know, that we're going to get character stuff out of character stuff. It's, yeah. you know, but when you're watching Raw, you know, it just, it's such a disconnect um, constantly. So for Seth to be sort of the champion that they don't believe in um, and is kind of like getting by the skin of his teeth a lot of the times with the help of the authority, um, I just think everything about the positioning of Seth has been crap. And he shouldn't, again, he shouldn't be a top heel. Um, and again, you have to look at the whole history of what's gone on the last little while of him and the dick pics. Pardon my French. But, you know, <laughs> that whole scandal, which led to him leaving his girlfriend or whatever and, and ending up with this uh, Zara Schreiber, a real winner. And um, then having this embarrassment of her past coming and haunting her days after they had appeared on TV together um, at the NXT special. And then... Having, again, think about this, the world champion's girlfriend getting fired, and then the ratings pattern as well. It seems like there's a lot going against this guy right now. It does. It does. And he's handling it well, to be, yes, to be honest. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's time for a change for him for a lot of reasons. But number one is to kind of shake off everything that's been building up against him right now. I think to continue with the status quo and going ahead as things have been is going to be bad for everybody, but most especially for Seth. Because as I said, I think a lot of unnecessary blame is landing at his feet. And it, I think if they at least try to do something different, then they can't fall back on this idea that it's all Seth's fault. So so there you go. And then the main event, if, assuming it is the main event, uh, Rollins versus Sting. I'm just going to say this. I mean, he's 56 years old. Should he be in the main event? I think I've said this over and over again, and, and I hope everyone really does understand this right now. When I say anything positive about Sting, it doesn't mean I feel as though he should be in the position he's in right now. It just means that for a 56-year-old man, I kind of have to give him his due. And I know he hasn't had matches or anything, but I think his physicality, he doesn't look like a 56-year-old man when he comes in there and does that stuff with Seth. I mean, I, I have been impressed with what you know how he's done i mean i don't understand why he wrestled this week but again that was a ratings uh panic move i guess as well maybe so, i think i think they i also think he's winding down and i think they wanted to give him a, a raw match to mm -hmm. say that they did uh, maybe also honestly so that they can do a sting dvd down the road and have some a bit more current content uh, it may also just be that he has a certain number of um of matches on his contract and they think well you know might as well use it here 
Um, but I mean, right. I agree with you. Sting has done one thing really, really um, well uh, in, in his sort of the last, you know, that little bit of his career, which is that he's taking care of himself, yeah. not just physically, but he's taking care of, of his character and his brand. Even though he had that run in TNA um, that was you know, less than spectacular, I never really felt watching it that it was Sting's fault that it was less than spectacular. He still kind of tried to reinvent himself and tried to go out there sure. and entertain and did a really, really good job of putting the young guys over, which made me respect oh, yeah. him too. So, I mean, I think Sting is taking good care of himself on all levels. And by God, I'm, I'm fine to see him in this match um, against Seth. But I think the positioning was good because you get to see him in a, game, a match against Seth when presumably Seth will already be tired from having fought Cena earlier in the night. Mm -hmm. So Sting can look really good in their match, and it doesn't make Seth look bad, provided that they book it so that it's the second match of the night. Yeah, that right. way you can even have Sting go over him, and regardless of, of what excuses they have, you can go, yeah, but Cena beat the crap out of Seth earlier on in the night. Sting gets his moment. I wouldn't even mind Sting taking the title tonight. Holding it very briefly and then Seamus yeah. cashing in. Not that I want Seamus to be champion either, but I have a feeling this is where you're going with this, is that it is time to bounce that title around a little bit and see where it settles and have it settle on somebody interesting. Right, and that's certainly not Seamus, but I, I mean, no. when you look at the TV, and this is, again, we've talked about how silly it was with the Cesaro thing that he, he got to over and then they had to have him go on a losing streak. How silly is it that a guy goes on a losing streak like Seamus and that automatically puts up your antennae, an antennae uh, of he's going to win the title, he's going to cash in. Uh, Sheamus is as ice cold and has about as little momentum as anybody in the top mix right now, and yet he's been losing every match on TV, which makes everybody think, oh, for God's sakes, he's going to win the title. That has got to be the most backwards thing in wrestling right now, and it's something that they've done for a while now. When somebody loses and they have that briefcase, it means they're going to win. So, okay, um, but... Yeah, again, I think you're right. I think Sting is going to be a transitional champion. I think it's going to be probably on to Sheamus, but I could honestly see Roman Reigns. I see Roman Reigns with this title sooner than later, actually. Um, how how do we go about doing it? You could do the old story of having him go against Sheamus after Sheamus wins the belt and then winning the title and then turning heel. Or I just see a, a heel Roman Reigns as world champion in the next two months. I would say I two months from now, that's going to be where things are. That's just I'm not, I'm not going to say that's best for business at a time when they're struggling, but I am going to say that's best for Roman Reigns. And if the plan here is that they're really going to continue hanging hanging their hopes on Roman Reigns being a key player, it's got to happen sooner rather than later. Roman Reigns needs to turn heel. You need to give him more to talk about, more to do, and yep. more motivation. Because by God, how hard is it? We've seen it so many times. How hard of it? How how hard is it for a guy who's already struggling with his promos, struggling with his character, to also try to be put over as a babyface with nothing no. to say? Let Reigns go, man. Let him go. Set him free. Let him be a big bad crazy heel. And if it doesn't work, you're no worse off than you are right now. You're definitely no worse off. That's no question about it. And I think you're right. It's a time right now, transitional period. We need to sort of. Bounce it around a little bit and see what sticks. Um, but, yo, know, I think he could do something where he defeats Sheamus after Sheamus cashes in. I don't think Sheamus is holding it for very long. I just don't. Yeah, I don't either. And uh, and then he wins the belt, and then maybe even the very next night he comes out for a celebration, and the fans are, like, you know, lukewarm on the whole thing. And that's when how you can have the uh, catalyst for him being like, like, what do I have to do? You know, what's wrong with you people? Like, you know, and then he can turn on the people for not supporting him in his title ring and then bring up the whole thing of winning the Royal Rumble and everything. So there's a ton of stuff you can use for ammunition. Uh, my, my family came in the ring and the rock and all this stuff. And you still treated us like crap. All this stuff. There's all yeah. kinds of stuff you could use for Roman. So, again, when we do the show two months from now, I think that it'll be a heel Roman Reigns as world champion. That's just me. That's just where I feel like things may be going. Um, but regarding Sting and regarding Rollins, you know, it's funny. There's two matches this year, before this year is over, that I'm so excited about, and it's for the exact same reason. One of them is tonight's match, Ro uh, Rollins versus Sting. I'm just interested to see what Rollins can pull out of the match. I'm interested to see how good Rollins really is. You know, we think we know, but tonight might even be another feather in the cap. And then you look at the match, Tenru, his retirement match coming in December against Okada. It's very, 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 very similar kind of intrigue. I want to see what Okada can do with Tenru, and I want to see what Rollins can do with Sting. 
we see tons of matches a year of two awesome guys, Kota Bushi AJ or Nakamura and, and Tana or any any combination, John Cena and uh, Seth Rollins. We've seen all kinds of matches with this really awesome guy in his prime against this really awesome guy in his prime. But sometimes you want something a little different and you want to see what somebody can do put in a different situation. And tonight, that's one of those matches. And again, it's just funny that they're also doing the same thing um, with Okada versus Tenru in December. So again, two matches I'm most interested in on the horizon. One happens tonight. And uh, I am very, very interested to see what Rollins can pull out of Sting at 56 years old. I'm with you on that. And if it wasn't Sting, I wouldn't be. But as I said before, never a big Sting fan, but I really respect what he's done. And I respect particularly what he's done with the last part of his career. I think he's capable. Um, and I think I think Seth's smart enough and good enough to really pull a decent match out of this. And I mean, what a great feather in the cap that'll be for Sting if he actually does get to win the mm-hmm. title tonight in a good match against Seth Rollins, even if he loses regardless. He gets to main event in, in a good match against Seth Rollins. So that's what I'm hoping for. I don't care about the outcome quite as much, but a good match for Sting. Um, we have to assume this has to be one of his last matches, if not his last. Um, so, no, good, you know, good luck to him and, and to everybody involved in this match tonight. Sure thing. So just to recap here, um, we will do our predictions. Neville and the Dragons versus Cosmic Wasteland, the Ascension and Cody Rhodes. Who do you see going over in this one, Chan? Cosmic Wasteland. I don't think you put yep. three guys together and give them a name um, if you're not going to have them win a match. So that's what, e- that's what I have to say. Even though it's the Ascension? <clears throat> Even though it's the Ascension, because I don't... I think they're rehabbing the Ascension as much as they can. And I think it's more about Cody right now. I think they have an awful lot still to do with um, with uh, um, Stephen Amell down the road. I don't think that they've, they've let that, that sail. And I think they want to keep the Stardust relatively strong, at least for the debut of his big stable. Ziggler versus Rusev should be a hot match. Uh, Shan doesn't care so much for the soap opera story. I have been strangely entertained by it. Uh, who do you see going over in this, Shan? I mean, where are we even going with this angle? Uh, I, I have no idea where they're going. It kind of depends on what they want to do with the outside players in this with, uh, you know, Summer Ray and uh, Lana. But I think Rusev has to win. I kind of feel like he has to win. That's just me. Okay. Um, I would say the same that I see Rusev going over tonight. Um, although, I don't know, that whole thing with Ziggler and, and the gift. Is there a way out of this, Shan, that Ziggler and Summer end up the heel duo? Oh. Because Rusev's almost a bit of a New Day thing himself. The fans are starting to get really entertained by Rusev. And yeah, Ziggler, but has Ziggler he pres- and Lana, I don't know. Ziggler and Lana has just been so cold. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reserve judgment on that. Uh, there may be a way, but I don't see it. I, I think I see Rusev as building himself up to be a much, much bigger heel before he makes the switch to being a face. Mm, but inter- interesting. Okay, so you're going with Rusev. I'm going with Rusev as well. Ambrose, Reigns, and Mystery Partner versus the Wyatts. Shan is seeing uh, Cesaro as the mystery, par- mystery Partner. I would say that that's a pretty good guess. I mean, you could really guess anybody for this. It's sort of hard to make a prediction on a Mystery Partner. Again, don't don't rule out Daniel Bryan. Don't rule out The Rock or somebody like that. But, uh, yeah, um, in this story, for the story, I think that the Wyatts are going to win. Because I still think that we're going to tease um, dissension between Reigns and Ambrose. And I just don't see them going over clean, especially with the new Wyatt's member and everything. It really seems like they're they're reha- rehabbing the Wyatt's right now too. Um, I'm going to so disagree. Who do, you, who do you think? Who do you think going to win? With you. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to say that. See, I don't. I, your reasoning is is good, and that's one way it could go. And as my as my B plan, I would go with that. But I don't think you bring in a mystery partner. Mm, if this true. mystery partner is significant, I don't think you bring them in. And have that team lose unless, as you say, they're teasing Reigns and Ambrose splitting. And somehow it's Reigns that ends up getting pinned as a result of something going wrong with this new threesome. And Reigns builds more resentment there. Um, I have more of a feeling that the Reigns turn is going to be very sudden. That it's going to be from out of nowhere. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with, the, with the, uh, the faces winning on this one. Yeah, you bring up a good point. But then again, if it is Cesaro... You never know. I mean, That's he's true. been on that losing streak, so maybe that will start to uh, spread now to Reigns and Ambrose. Um, and yeah, okay, so the Wyatts and that match. Um, next, Owens versus Ryback. We talked uh, quite extensively about this match. Um, we're down to the final few minutes here before the pay-per-view, Shan. So who's going to go over in this match? I'm gonna your last to, chance. I'm going to have to say Owens. I'm going to have to say Owens. As much as, I mean, either this, either this match or in some following match, 
but I think it's inevitable that Owens is going to win it, and I think it's a good idea. So I say give it to give it to Owens. Shan says Owens. I say Owens as well. The New Day versus the Dudleys. New Day just got the title back. And, and they're the so Dud- the wildly Dudleys, entertaining. And they're so wildly entertaining, but the Dudleys just came back. And we speculated that the crowd may sort of turn on the old guys, and maybe they're not as special. They're already sick of them or whatever, and they just love the New Day. But, I mean, the Dudleys have been pretty over on TV. So, I mean, the indication would be that both teams are going to be quite over today. Um, so I'm going to pick the new day, but I'm going to say this, that if the Dudleys do win the new day, I'll win it back tomorrow or, uh, or on raw or very shortly thereafter. I think new day is going to be this, the focal point of the tag team, t- um, yeah. um, division for a while. So I don't see, I could see them giving it to Dudley boys just to say, Oh, welcome back. And oh, you're, what is it? 10 time? Would they be 10 time tag champs or something so, like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But I still think that, and, and new day could survive that. I think they could survive it very easily. But I do think that in the long run, it's New Day. So I'm going with New Day. Yeah, I even see like a a DQ finish or something like that. Because the Dudleys are not just back for a one shot. You know, they're back and they're going to be a part of the tag division. And you don't have any team on the roster with that's more over that has more uh, credibility than the Dudleys. So you might as well keep this story going. I think what they've done so far has been pretty good. So um, best way to go about that. I'm all into a Dudleys tag um, reign. But I think you build you build towards that. You don't do that for this match. This is just the first one, and uh, somehow, some way, the New Day end up keeping the titles, even if they end up losing by DQ or countout or whatever. As long as I can hear a trombone, I'll be happy. And you will. And you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the day that somebody just puts their fist right in it. Uh, <laughs> And just yeah, I don't I don't want to say knocks out his teeth because I really like him. Um, yeah. I don't want him to have any extensive you know emergency dental surgery or anything like that, <laughs> especially when you don't have health insurance by WWE. <clears throat> That's true. Okay, Nikki Bella versus Charlotte. It is still called the Divas title, and um, we kind of talked about it. But but now that we're down to the the wire here, Shan, who's going over Charlotte or Nikki? I'm going to dare to dream, and I'm going to follow through on what you had mentioned before about just doing it and changing the division completely. So let's say, Charlotte, let's say that the new the new day of women's wrestling begins, or new night of women's wrestling starts this evening. Let's, let's say that. I'm going to say Charlotte, and everything changes. Just because it's WWE and just to be a, a contrarian, um, I'll have to say Nikki. I don't believe in that, though. I think you're probably right, so why don't I just say Charlotte? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, so yeah, we're both saying Charlotte for that one, and that is the, the best decision, I think, right now. Um, too much too much Nikki for my liking. Okay, Rollins versus Cena for the U.S. title. I think this has, I mean, easily could be match of the night, and I would probably put my money on this one for match of the night. I would too, and I'm going to say Cena, just because I yeah. think it's I, I Rollins can't handle the burden of two titles. He's already overexposed. If he's only going to hold one, let it be the world. Although I'm fine with him dropping both and it leading to a big, big shakeup for Seth. Now, Shan, do we go back to the U.S. <laughs> Open Challenge? Oh yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Just, just that pick was up the, where we left off there. That was the best part of Cena's U.S. title range, um, um, title, uh, you know, uh, his his uh, time as the U.S. champion was introducing all these new guys on a regular weekly basis let's go right back to that i think that's the best uh, the best choice i would agree with you i would agree with you i think rollins is going to be leaving this uh pay-per-view title list i think that's the way they go and again you copied ring of honor in the beginning in the uh, impetus of this that's the right word right it is of this angle you, you and, said uh, you said impetus not impotence did you <laughs> Yes. Although, with Although it has been quite impotent as well. <laughs> um, and impotent. But uh, <laughs> we shall see. Uh, we shall see how impotent this match really is when Rollins goes against Sting. And everything you said really made a lot of sense to me. Um, although they've been giving Rollins all this time on TV, there's just this glaring feeling that they just don't have faith in this guy. And he's going to be a, still a part of that top mix, but I just don't see him as this guy anymore and i feel like a nice transition for sting moving into whatever do you think there's a chance even that seamus cashes in tonight i i could totally see it tonight but i don't i don't think they will i think they'll tease it but i don't think it'll happen because i think they'll at least want to give sting a moment so he goes off the air as champion maybe he even gets through raw as champion but maybe the next week he gets taken up by seamus although he could just be have he could be taken up tomorrow um, but I'm going to say that Sting gets a little celebration and we go off the air with him as champ. 
And once again, I mean, I'm going to have to agree with you there that Sting's going to win the title tonight. I think that's the biggest story. I think for, for this show to have some kind of buzz, that would be the best way to get buzz is to say Sting won the title uh, against Seth Rollins. But it's kind of funny, again, that Rollins, maybe this is how you start to make him a baby face. Because, again, he, he's having to face Cena earlier in the night and then go in there and face Sting. And if he puts on a really good performance but loses... You know, there's sympathy on the guy for that. So, uh, yeah, I could see that happening as well. But it should be a fun show. I'm, I'm looking forward to the show. I'm looking forward to the two New Japan shows coming up this week. One on Wednesday, one on Sunday. Lots of big matches there, so we'll be back to talk about that. But from myself, from Shotgun Shan, uh, any final word before we go off the air, Shan? No, buddy. You know, I, I, I got this feeling. I got that tingling in my broken toe that's making me feel like things are coming. It's either a big storm or it's a big change in the world of wrestling. And I'm going to say it's a big change in the world of wrestling. I think by this time tomorrow, we may be looking at a slightly different landscape. And it'll, it'll be for the better. So from myself and Shotgun Shan. And Shotgun Shan's broken toe. And Shotgun Shan's broken toe. We want to say peace. We want to say love. We want to say promotional consideration is paid for by the following. And, of course, we want to say yo, 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 and away we go. No, that's not it. We want to say brrrr. No, that's definitely not it. Uh, we won't, uh, no, I, I can. Let me just let me just think. Okay, yeah, I got it. We want to say we'll talk to you again after a little while. No, that's not it. <laughs> we want to say the most electrifying catchphrase in all of Wrestle Talk Radio. Peace, love, wrestling, audio, revolution. Enjoy the paper. Now we heat and did dirt. And we get lights killing it. Me coming up, but it still hurt. And can't nobody change this. It's 1994, and we up against the same shit. I never understood why. I can never see a man cry till I seen a man die. Man cry. Imagine life at its full peak. Then imagine lying day in the arms of your enemy. Imagine peace on this earth when there's no grief. Imagine grief on this earth when there's no peace. Everybody's got a different way of ending it. And when your number comes for souls, then they send it in. Now your time has arrived for your final test. I see the fear in your eyes and in your final breath. How much longer will it be till it's all done? Total darkness at ease, be it all one. I watch him die and when he dies, let us celebrate. You took his life, but your memory you never take. You'll be headed to another place. And the life you used to live will reflect in your mother's face. I still gotta wonder why I never seen a man cry Till I seen a man die